All right, so we're here with some Cold War about talking Diablo 4 because it's Server Slam. So, long story short, the Server Slam went well. The bait, the, you know, there were some nerfs, there's some buffs to the classes, but the point I want to make here is the accessibility of the last beta and this one. Um, there are improvements, uh, there are actual improvements from the accessibility from last beta to this one, to the point where, um, you know, some menus were changed around, but we really did find those. Um, settings in, in Adopt Club. So we had the the new things I noticed. So we had okay, sorry. We still had the proximity indicator for interactables like chests, doors, uh, breakables, whatever. So there's that. We're in this directional, so you can hear up, down, left, right. You still had the TTS that reads all your skills and gear, which is the primary thing you needed to read in a game like Diablo. But here's the change. Here's the kicker: the TTS reads more than it did last time, and what I mean is, it actually reads your action buttons. It it doesn't say like square, triangle, B A. It doesn't say any of those. It says left action button, right action button. It so the, I think the the reason why it says it that way is to indicate or to easily translate between systems. Now, the mean. Now the big thing that I know a lot of people are are asking for. Is navigation assist and I understand it and I'm not saying that it's not a good thing to have however I'm coming at this from a RPG like a RPG player it doesn't like a nav assist wouldn't really I mean it, it, I'm sure you have to play the campaign to actually get to the adventure mode or end game but if they can't get a nav assist in the game it's not gonna stop me from playing the game there's already enough accessibility and effort put into the accessibility for me to stick with the game and support it anyway. At least that's my take. Um, I know I've seen some blind people on Twitter, you know, criticizing because of nav assist. Yet there's all these other workarounds you could do. For example, if you know, okay, let's say like your your first thing is you have to find this hermit's cabin, right? You know, you hear the characters tell you to the north you know cardinal directions north east south and west and here's the kicker you pull up the map the map will read to you different characters and landmarks you know what you can do pull up the map scroll up to where you hear campaign quest find hermit's cabin it literally tells you that on the map you can see it visually i'm sure uh, if you have vision of course and guess what you can press square or X on Xbox, and it will mark it so that when you get close, within like five to ten footsteps of the actual thing you need to click, you'll you'll know you're there. Now, is it as good as a nav assist from like Last of Us? No, but you also have to remember a game like Diablo is much different from a game like Last of Us or Ragnarok. Um. Excuse me. And that's the um that's the thing a lot of people seem to forget. The reason why games like Call of Duty and Diablo 3 were so playable, at least in my opinion, is because of the game design. They're not meant to, you know, be these crazy narrative puzzles and you know emotionally invested in story like COD is a quick and dirty game. You get in, kill things. Or get in, get some kills, die, get some kills, die. Like, it's this rinse and repeat. It's, it is the same thing over and over. The difference is coming to objective modes and, you know, playing with parties. And the game itself, like, if you, if, for example, if your aim gets thrown off, like you're looking at the sky, okay, great, so what? Hold a grenade, commit suicide. Or wait till an enemy kills you. That'll reset you right away. Now, yes, it sucks, you lose a streak, but guess what? Cold War, you don't have streaks anyway, because... They passively generate the damn streaks. But my point is that, and, and with Diablo 3, Diablo 3 was like so playable and accessible, not because of the TTS and bumpers and whatever other stuff you saw in Diablo 4. It was so playable because of the way the game worked on console. Um, you know, the menus are a circular pattern, so you could easily memorize, okay, left is this, right is this. You know, top left is this, top right is that. And the sound design was so good that you could hear 
direction indicators of like you can you can you could indicate the direction an enemy was coming from which way you had to go things like that so in my opinion Diablo 4 regardless if if there was no accessibility no TTS no bumpers no anything for fully blind players I would still personally recommend the game simply because a game like Diablo is in itself is playable blind yes it would be harder if there was no TTS obviously it would be much harder you have to go see your almost everything to a point but at the end of the day what is in Diablo 4 is amazing as far as ARPGs go I cannot think of an ARPG title that has done this level of accessibility and it's not to say I don't follow those games and look them up like I have like Torchlight uh, I think Torchlight 3, Grim Dawn, Diablo um, those are th uh, you know, Path of Exile, Path of Exile is probably the biggest like one of the biggest ARPGs out there problem is Path of Exile's inherent design is such a clutter that getting into it blind or not is hard even sighted people can't play that game because it's just so complex it's ridiculous but as far as I'm concerned if you are blind or vision impaired and played Diablo 3 at all you'll have a much better experience than Diablo 4 and you'll probably be seeing me play Diablo a lot um, there might be even enough accessibility in the game that I could theoretically do blind builds um, you know for example in Diablo 3 you really just follow build guides like from Rax or Riker or Bloodshed or Udijo, right? Or Max Roll. You generally follow those builds, which is fine, right? That's kind of just, that's just how the game works na na natively. But Diablo 4 offers a lot more freedom of expression for um, different players, so maybe there might be enough uh, depth to where I can make blind builds instead of just following Riker or whoever. It won't. I, they probably won't be meta like you know getting to the highest difficulty highest challenge or whatever but there'll be enough for blind people to play them effectively i hope um so i do see you guys on day before hope you guys let me know if you guys tried the service time so we know what you guys think um as far as classes go the accessibility side i think barb and if the druid is buffed a bit more for launch I think Barb and Druid are the two I play the most. With um, arguably Sorcerer being the least, because I, I don't know, I'm not big on Sorcerers. And Rogue and Necro, depending. Um, I think what I'll try to do in, is I'll try and run through the campaign with every class until Season 1 starts. And then from there, try and do the, the Adventure Mode stuff, right? The end game. So, we'll see. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks again. See you guys next time.